Okay, today I'm going to show you how to replace the obsolete ABB ASC320 drive with the new ABB ACH180 drive. There are some differences, let's check it out. Popular in carrier units, they shipped with either an ABB ASC320 or the larger ACH550 drives. They usually didn't come with a keypad, just have this blank off cover, so you just have your power and your fault lights. Place it with the smaller ACH180 that does not have a removable keypad. You can plug in a keypad through the bottom port, but that's about it. So they're going to come like this. It's pretty much a low cost, all built in one drive to replace this drive. There is some differences in programming it. Makes it a little bit frustrating at first, but once you kind of understand the icons in here, it's actually pretty easy. We're going to go through that. One thing you want to do is you do not want to use the guide from ABB or that comes with these drives. They do not ship the uh, VFD installation manual with these replacement drives when they come with the carrier part numbers. You have to like download that manual and it's usually called like VFD-12 SI for the installation manual. It's a current one and then there's a supplement to that that's been released for this. So I have a copy of that that's been notated. So it's gonna make it easy for just a few perimeters you need to set. And also I wanna show you some of the key differences down here. So here was your wiring. These jumpers represent the jumpers that are required for it to run from the 24 volt DC power over to two of the inputs. If you look over here, those jumpers are actually removed from the drive and they're built into the plug called PL25, commonly used in carrier units. So these are your differences. These are your terminal numbers. It wires the same, but the terminal numbers have changed. So note that. And then I have it connected here and I have the jumpers here. Again, the jumpers will not be here. They will be on the PL25 Molex plug. These jumpers up here are new and they need to stay in there. Right here where it says safe torque off function, those jumpers from S plus to S1 in and S2 in have to be on. If you remove those, the drive stops. So I've got this powered up, but one thing I want to do is I need to restore this to factory default since I already programmed it. So here's your first little icon, and this is what's frustrating is like icons, well that's motor settings, and here's your kind of scaler, your it delays and stuff. Here's your troubleshooting one, diagnostics, uh, I forget what this one was, some other settings. But then you want to get down here where it shows a wrench and the hamburger button, that's your settings. Normally we're going to want to go to the full settings. These are change settings, but down here is factory reset. Go ahead and turn this power off. I get a better look here. Do that. Got the little check mark. It just reset this thing. This is a kind of a good noted guide. There's another page showing your wiring from the thermostats through the VFD relay board that's in the controls and how it switches because this is separate power. The relays will switch the 24 volt DC to the two inputs right there. So what you're going to need is you're going to need to set all the control parameters, and that's on this page. These parameters will be the same no matter what voltage you have or motor size. So those ones you can go ahead and enter. After you enter those, you're going to have to go down and look up specifics to your motor that's installed in your voltage. But you want to get into the perimeters. So to do that, hit this hamburger button, and you can scroll down or up once to get to that menu again. And yet, this time we're going to want to go to the full set. These are perimeter group numbers. So it's like 0, 01 through 99. The first one is 9908, right? So instead of going down to 99, we're just gonna back it up. We're in 99s. Hit enter, expands that group, and now we want 9908. We go to 9908, set for 60 hertz. That one, there's some of these you do not have to change, but you just wanna check them. So I'm gonna scroll down to 28, and 22. Now you're going to be jumping back and forth a little out of order because these are out of order. But right now we're going to do the order of the list. 2822 is your constant speed selection. These are important. So we need three and four for those two inputs. So right now it's set for four for the first one, which was programmed for six hertz. So I go down here and change that to a three. That's changed. Now we need to go 2823 and change that to a four. This is programming in which inputs are used. Now, 28. 26 is going to be the first of the speed references. There's that 6 hertz you got. So we want to change that to 40. So we're going to go up to 10, and then over here, 10s, and we're going to go up to 4 for 40. There you go. 28, 27 needs to be 60 hertz. You're going to fumble through this until you get used to it, and then it'll get faster. As you see, I'm kind of just going right through these. 
go up to an even number and then skip it over the tens and get the 60. So now it's 40, 60, 60. 10, 24 is the next one. So you're going to go back to get to the groups, up to 10. Enter. Down to 24. That's set for 54. We need 16. This is the relay output. It probably won't even change the way the machine works because nothing's hooked up to the relay outputs, but you still need to change it. Enter. There we go. 30, 13. Thirteen is zero hertz. And the next one, 30, 30, 14 is gonna be sixty hertz. You don't have to change those ones. Twenty-one nineteen. Twenty-one nineteen is set for option five. And it needs to be for option two, which is the start function, which is basically to tell it to auto start, I believe. The next one is 2103 for coast. So let's back up a little bit. That was set for zero, and that's set for zero, so that's good. 2870, so we gotta go back to the 28. So back one, down to 28. So you kind of see it jumping around a little bit with the way they set this up. 71, so you're gonna hold down for a little while to get down there. It. That's set for zero, and over here that's zero. But then the next one, 72, 73, or 30 seconds each, those are already set for that. So that's good. Some of these, as I said, you might be able to even skip once you kind of know the drives. So now we got to go to 97s. So I'm going to back up and roll over to zero, back down to 90s. 97. We got 9701 is your switch frequency, four, hertz, four kilohertz. That's fine. Option four. And then the 9713 above it, zero. 9713, zero. Now we're going to go to the 31s. 3115, trial time. 30 seconds. They want it at 300 seconds. So we're going to go to three, drop that down to zero. That's like five minutes. And this one, they want it set for six seconds and it's set for five. So it's an easy change. Six. There you go. And then one more, 3112. It's kind of interesting that they list these out of order for you. See hex. They, uh, some of this here before the slash is actually the 320. Forgot to white that out. The white it out ACS. They confuse you with the book by putting like the old drive part and the new part in a slash. And then both perimeter numbers with a slash. And then both settings with a slash. So I whited out all the perimeter numbers there for the ACS 320 just to make it not confusing to look at. But I didn't kind of do that over here, but it's kind of what it is. So it kind of leaves you a description at least. So we need to change that bit zero to one. So we're gonna enter that bit zero, which is you scroll these down, these are the different ones. So bit zero is a one, enter. So that's what we want for that. That's it for those. Okay, so those were the easy perimeters, which are the ones that you set for every drive, no matter the size of the motor or the voltage of the unit. This is where people get confused. What you have to do on this list, but if you call like the tech support, they will usually take your unit model number and the motor you have and look it up for you and give you the perimeters you need. But if you're gonna do it from this list, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your drive, which this is a, ends in 510, We'll just do the first 460 volt one there is, for an example, because that's 460 volt drive. So that would be if it was paired up with this HD56FR 463 motor in the unit. And there's different motors for different size units or different static pressures. And they kind of have a combination of drive with motor for those applications. So you want to find the data set for that. So in this case, 460 volt, this drive, that motor, you go over here in this data set, is this 48TM009830 data. So you go down to the next table, table seven, you find that data. Here's it's the second one down. Just five perimeters, it's real easy, but these are the specifics of the voltage applied at the unit plus the motor ratings. So we're gonna back out here and we're gonna get over to 9907. And here's your 460 volt. Now, they actually recommend you to read your voltage on site because like here in Phoenix, we're running between like 490 and 495 at a lot of sites. It's pretty crazy. So if you enter in the actual site voltage, the nominal voltage there, then it kind of scales your limits based on that. If you leave it at 460, you're probably going to be okay, but that was what we were instructed to do. So that one I'm going to leave for here.
<laughs> I'm using a step up power supply from 115 at my house to get this for you. 9906. That's the amps. So it says 2.9. So we'll go ahead and just change that a couple points. And then the next one is 9909, which is the nominal frequent nominal RPM of the motor, which is 1725 for this application. If you didn't change this one, it probably wouldn't kill you, but let's go ahead and change it. It's kind of like the rated slip of the motor and where pretty much what it runs at. Now 9910 is going to be your horsepower rating. This is set for two. It says 1.7. So we go over here to the tenths, go down, enter. And then one more, max amps, 30.17. And guess what? It's in another group. So we're going to go over to 30s again. I'm going to set that, and we're going to go to 17. 6.48. It actually says 2.9, which is the same as the nominal amps. And that's what they got in there, so I'll just set this one for three. And there you go. That should have been the last one. So now I'll just back all the way out of there. I'm actually I'm gonna cycle the power and see if it comes on auto on its own. Some drives go to the last setting, so it depends. So I'm gonna turn the power off. DFDs have capacitors that you have to drain out. So give it a few seconds. And it should blank out. There it goes. Turn the power back on. See if this starts in auto mode. It might not. And it doesn't look like it did. So if you leave it this way, guess what's going to happen when you go to turn, close your switch? It doesn't run. So we go to auto. Hit auto. There we go. The drive's ready. Just hit this. And there we go. 40 hertz. It's got a 30 second acceleration curve, so it takes 30 seconds to go from 0 hertz to 40 hertz. And we have all that inertia you're getting going. This is called a soft start, which is actually good. Saves on the belts, saves on the noise, just more efficient. And there we go. Getting up to 40 hertz. And then what the drives do is when you get a call for that second stage cooling, the relay board is going to switch to this other input instead. Now it's calling for 60. This is the command up in the right corner. This is what it's actually at currently, and it's correcting it and basically going there with the you know, scaled acceleration curve. And just like you stop it, it has that scaled deceleration curve. There we go, we're getting the 60 hertz, and then that's 60 hertz. There she goes. Turn it off. Now it's gonna take 30 second deceleration curve. Slowly, slowly getting there. And it's still slowing down. And there we go. I'm going to kill the power. We'll test out the automatic function. There's a little warning, probably a low voltage warning. I'm gonna leave this jumped on as if G was connected already when the power starts. Let's see what happens. Auto, 40 hertz command, and it's starting the acceleration curve. And that's it, and that's how you program the ACH 180 drive, specifically here for carrier stage air volume units. That will be small, medium rooftop units and the commercial split units. With the newer equipment, including the commercial splits, they're now using that axial fan known as EcoBlue. Just uses a varying 2 to 10 volt signal input and a board or direct signal from controllers. So you no longer have to deal with the drives on the new units, you'll just have to deal with the drives for replacement on existing units.